In Christ alone my hope is found He is my life, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are still, when striving cease My comforter my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the power of Christ I There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse and lost its grip on me for I am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of Christ no in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand well I hope you enjoyed uh, singing together in Christ alone one of the great new hymns of God's church. Again, one of those hymns that are now sung by followers of Jesus all over this world. So here we are, week two of uh, Lent, and uh, we're going to continue with our forgiving challenge. In just a few moments, we'll watch uh, this week's video, about another 10-minute video uh, by Pastor Zach Zender. And this week, it's on the subject of sin. Sin. Three little letters, but oh my goodness, sin. So as we um, look at uh, sin, uh, he's going to uh, show, he'll, he'll be at a huge, huge garbage facility, dump facility in the state of Florida and make some amazing, amazing uh, analogies with that and what's a sin. And one of the things that uh, one of the ways to define sin is that we're missing the mark. He'll talk about that, and he's going to uh, be uh, fe featuring, we'll be featuring uh, Peter, who obviously, as we know, was a great sinner, but also uh, was very much greatly forgiven by Jesus. Let's watch this video together.
So welcome back to Forgiving Challenge. Uh, this is a challenge where you're gonna end up being free. I think it's a really noble pursuit to forgive others, but I found the single greatest key in forgiving others well is first knowing that you have been forgiven by God. My family's lived in Central Florida for a little over a decade and several times we've gone south and one of the places that's always been intriguing to me, believe it or not, is where we are today. It's Monarch Hill Renewable Energy Park. That's a lot to say, but essentially it's this giant landfill that's right off of the turnpike. And believe it or not, this landfill was only 10 feet high a couple of decades ago and now sits at 225 feet high, which I promise you, it's not a joke, makes it one of the highest elevation points in the entire state of Florida. This landfill is amazing and the stats that come from this landfill are insane. Did you know that 12 to 20 million pounds of food get dropped here every single day? And, and also when Hurricane Irma blew through a few years ago, it was literally 3 billion pounds of trash was added to the landfill. Not only this, but this landfill powers 10,000 homes a month. They think it's gonna be another 17 years for this landfill to reach its capacity, which at that point they'll cap it off with sand and grass and monitor it and dispose of it over the next 30 years until it settles. And I found out in my research that a lot of old landfills, they actually turn into public parks. And believe it or not, I found this out too, that in the last two decades, they've turned 70 golf courses, 70 old landfills into golf courses, some of them even luxurious. And you're saying, well, what's so amazing about all this? Why are we here at a landfill in this video? Well, I think that proves the point that human beings are really smart, creative, and inventive when it comes to getting rid of and disposing all of our physical garbage and our physical trash. But when human beings, those same human beings, think that we can dispose of our spiritual garbage with inventive, creative ways or using our own strength and power and grit, we're gonna find it leads to devastating consequences. And so today I wanna dive deeper into that spiritual garbage, into what the Bible calls sin. Sin is a small word that packs a mighty punch. One of the most offensive things you can tell somebody today is that they are a sinner. But the reality is we all make bad decisions and poor choices. And we are in fact sinful. The Apostle Paul that wrote a lot of the New Testament tells us in Romans 3 that there is no one fully righteous, not anyone. And later he would say all of us fall short of the glory of God. So what exactly is sin? Did you know that sin is an old archery term that means to miss the mark? And so if you picture a dartboard, if bullseye is the mark intended to hit, that means that anything other than bullseye would be considered sin. So that means when you're playing in your mom and dad's basement and your dart hits the drywall completely off the board, that, that's a sin. But also the ones that are just a little bit off, that's a sin. And all of us have little misses and big misses in this life. In our nation, amazingly, most people still profess a faith in Jesus, but only 22% of American men and 33% of women depend on Jesus to overcome their sin. A third of people don't even confess the fact that they're sinners. And so let's get real. If you want to be free, the admission price into freedom begins with an admission of your sin. So let me start by putting my cards out on the table first. My name is Zach Zender and I am a sinner. I've missed the mark in the past. I still miss the mark today. And I fully believe that even with God's grace inside of me and me trying my best representation at following Jesus, I'll miss the mark in the future. Some of my misses are really small and unintended. Some of them though are intended and really off. Uh, uh, sins of my past include greed and pride and lust and wrongful comparison. Uh, I haven't always been merciful to others when I ought to have been. And sometimes I serve myself first even though I should serve others, I still am wrestling with this idol of comfort. And so nowhere do I want you to tell me that I have it all together and fully affirm me for who I am because I truly wanna be a greater follower of Jesus and I hate the fact that sin gets in my way and I wanna get better and better. And I believe that for you too. And so nowhere in this 40 day journey will you tell me that you are perfect just the way you are. That's a lie, you're not. You have big misses and little misses. And I hope that the reason you're joining me in this challenge is not so that we can have a fake plastic inauthentic experience, but that we can truly deal with the broken, the messy, and even the worst parts of our stories. 
Now here's the reality, that sin can ruin you. Sin can keep you in bondage. That heap of sin can keep piling up. But what we have is a God who is stronger and greater than sin and he can climb that mountain of sin and he can rescue you from everything that you've done because here's the reality, God loves you deeply but he also cares deeply about who you are becoming. So let's enter into the story of Peter. Peter was one of the 12 disciples chosen by Jesus. And Peter like became the outspoken leader of the disciples. Anytime you see the names of the disciples, Peter is always mentioned first. And there were times when Peter got it so right and times when he got it so wrong, which is why I think I can so relate to him. And maybe you can too. Peter was not only chosen to be a disciple, but he was also given like the most incredible opportunity from Jesus himself. Jesus called Peter to be like the pastor of the very first church. And so Jesus believed in Peter and trusted a lot to Peter. And yet what Peter is most known for was three denials during the crucifixion of Jesus. The story tells us that Peter was watching the crucifixion at a distance in a courtyard, warming his hands by a charcoal fire. And in this fire, there was one servant girl that asked Peter, did you follow Jesus? And he denied even knowing Jesus. And he denied Jesus a second time and even a third time. You would think with how much Jesus believed in Peter and had trusted into Peter that he would never fail like this. And any sort of failing of this magnitude would forever end his story. But what we find in Jesus is that any failure, any sin, any time we miss the mark is simply an opportunity to fall into the love and the grace and forgiveness of Jesus. In the last videos, we talked about how Jesus burst into the quarantined room filled with disciples. And it looks like the author of the gospel, John, has every intention of closing out the gospel. In fact, the subheading in my Bible reads, the purpose of John's gospel. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. And so that's it. The story's over. It's a beautiful story, beautiful ending. Jesus died. He rose. He then appeared again to the disciples. Except for one thing. When I open up my Bible, I see there's an entire chapter still. It's John. It's the 21st chapter of John, which I counted them up, is the final chapter in all four Gospels, the 89th chapter. And it's in this 89th chapter where we're going to spend most of our time from here on out in the Forgiving Challenge. So what's so special about the 89th chapter? This is the chapter that I'm going to open up where I'm going to show you exactly how Jesus forgives Peter. Even though Peter was in the quarantined room, it wasn't until the 89th chapter that Jesus dealt with the sin and the wounds that Peter had from those sins. But think for a moment if there wasn't this chapter. Peter might forever go down as the denier. And what would happen with his life? What would he do? What would happen with the early church? Would Jesus have chosen somebody else? We don't know the answer to these questions because we don't need to know because Jesus showed up again. Even though everybody else might have thought in the way the world works, Peter's story should have been over. Jesus came to him and God's best work happens when your story appears over. And so what about your story? What sins are you still holding on to? What wounds are you carrying? Sin can ruin you, but it doesn't have to. You can let that sin continue to pile up and you can try with your own power and strength to overcome it and to defeat it. But the real answer to overcoming sin will always be fully and wholly Jesus and nobody and nothing else. Now the amazing thing is that if you're ready to have Jesus battle and overcome your sin for you, the death that he died on the cross is enough to pay the price for you. And his story can become your story because no matter how far you've gone, he's ready to come to you again here today. And I know that because of the very first four words in John 21, which says, afterward, Jesus appeared again. When your story appears over, God appears to write a new chapter. Because here's the thing about our God, he doesn't write stories that end badly. He doesn't write stories that end in sin. He simply writes a new chapter. 
And so don't listen to the trash talk of the enemy or the, the, the garbage that the enemy is slinging at you, but listen today to this truth. That no matter what you've done, no matter what sins you have piled up, Jesus is ready to take those from you and give you real freedom. So as we continue our journey in Lent with a forgiving challenge, we're going to be in days 6 through 12, um, uh, starting today and into next week. And um, uh, in days 6 to 12 in the Forgiving Challenge book, he's got a number of uh, wonderful exercises. On page 51, it's uh, the challenge is, what's your name? Uh, again, as we think about uh, our names, oftentimes there's meaning to our names. Who were we sometimes named after? Another challenge that he has on page 57 is writing your funeral eulogy, your own funeral eulogy. It's an exercise that's been made popular by many, many authors over the years and uh, something that uh, you might want to participate in. Uh, the next challenge is, uh, are we, when it comes to sin, are we an elevator or a minimizer? And it's got a question like this, uh, do you naturally tend to elevate sin or minimize sin? And then why? And there's a number of other questions also. Another challenge is what's called the sin test. And there's 12 questions um, that are really difficult. And uh, again, as I uh, take the sin test, I don't do very well at all. Um, but then there's some amazing Bible verses that are accompanying uh, the sin test. Uh, for instance, 2 Corinthians 12.9, My grace, grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. And Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, great, great Bible verses. Uh, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one may boast. In the great Bible verse from Romans 5, 8, God demonstrates his own love for us. While we were still, still sinners, Christ died for us. So again, we fail the sin test, but Jesus does not fail in forgiving us our sins. And then he's got something in the book called the Omission Test. And uh, uh, there are Bible passages after all ten of these uh, statements. So it's, um, do we not do the things that God calls us to do. That's what omission is. And so that's a challenging uh, test. And he's got something in here uh, the, the, called Kill the Spider. It's after uh, a book that was released a number of years ago by a popular author. And you can read more about that in the... And then the final test for our days uh, 6 through 12 is to read chapter 89. Again, if you remember, you recall from the video, uh, the last chapter... In the Gospel of John uh, is the 89th chapter uh, of the four Gospels. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you add them all together. The, last, uh, the number of the last chapter would be chapter 89. So, again, um, uh, this is an invitation for you if you have not yet picked up a Forgiving Challenge book to walk through our journey of Lent. Uh, you're encouraged to do so. We have them available here at church. If you need to, you can uh, um, email, to, email us, text us, uh, call us, and if you even need it to be mailed to you, we can uh, do that. These are uh, cost $20. was going to put them on sale, uh, but again, I think it's well worth the investment of $20 for uh, you to walk along uh, with this. So um, uh, let me end our time together with uh, one of the things that uh, Pastor Zender uh, made reference to in the video. Hello, my name is Jeff, and I'm a sinner. If you go to an AA meeting, oftentimes that's what uh, they start off. Hello, my name is, and I'm an alcoholic. Uh, what Pastor Zender didn't uh, uh, say to us, and maybe you know this already also, but 
if you go to a, if you ended up going to an AA meeting or some one of the other AA type of meetings that are out there, there's a lot of them, uh, different types for all kinds of things that happen and that to us. But if you when you say hello, my name is and I'm a, uh, the people that are there at the meeting. Hello, Jeff. Glad you are here. Uh, that's for us at the church too. Hello, my name is Jeff and I'm a sinner. Hello, Jeff. We're glad that you are here. So uh, what's our forgiving challenge? How can we help each other forgive? And I think our forgiving challenge is to practice forgiving together. As we uh, say over and over again, how can we practice living that we are broken, that we are people that are sinners? How can we be broken following Jesus together long to glory. Again, as we know, sin, a part of sin is that it separates us from God and then it separates us from one another. The forgiving challenge is that Jesus brings us back together with God, but also Jesus wants to help us to try to be back together with each other. So uh, we want to keep practicing how to do that so we can be broken, because we're always going to be broken, always going to be sinners, but following Jesus, following Jesus, and doing that together, doing that long, all the way to glory. That's the forgiving challenge. So let's end our time uh, for prayers for each other, prayers for our broken world, uh, the news is full of what's going on in Ukraine with Russia. Uh, there was maybe also saw that North Korea is kind of in the news. They fired up another test missile, and that got people uh, pretty nervous and excited. And just praying for our own United States with all the things that are happening here. Uh, but let's pray, and then we'll pray together uh, the Lord's Prayer. We pray. Gracious God, on this uh, Lent Wednesday, we are grateful that you continue to uh, lead us and to guide us and to give us some moments of worship. Again, just singing, in Christ alone, in Christ alone. That's where our hope is. That's where our forgiveness is. So help us to practice this forgiveness challenge as we sing a hymn like in Christ alone. Help us to know that uh, sin is Man, is it huge, like that um, huge, huge garbage dump in Florida. And we've got those garbage dumps around here, too, that continue to grow and increase. And so we know that sin can be small, but sin can be so huge. So as we continue to pray for souls that matter to you, souls of brothers and sisters in Ukraine, souls of brothers and sisters in Russia, Souls of brothers and sisters that are involved following you, Jesus, in churches. Churches in Ukraine, churches in Russia, churches in other places. We know that North Korea persecutes many, many Christians, and there's not, uh, uh, churches aren't allowed to be open in North Korea. But we know that wherever there are people who have souls that matter to you, that their souls can be formed and shaped by our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus, will you continue to be with brothers and sisters under the oppression of North Korea? So we lift these prayers up to you. We know that you hear us. We know that you're hearing millions and millions of prayers all over this world for that there would be peace in this world, that there might be sanity in this world. But yet we know that it's so broken. And so, Jesus, we're grateful that you came into our world. Grateful that in this season of Lent 2022, we continue to trust you. We continue to try to follow you wisely, knowing that we are always going to be broken. But broken following you, Jesus. May we do it together. May we do it long until there is no more brokenness because we're out of this broken kingdom and into the fullness of the kingdom of your glory. And so as you have taught us to pray, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So again, one last time, let me encourage you to uh, pick up a Forgiving Challenge book. It's not a hard read. Big, big uh, pages where uh, there's just a lot of uh, wonderful spiritual benefits that will happen as we practice this Forgiving Challenge alone. And now, for our time together, let's go out with a whisper. Christ in us, the hope of glory.